All right, everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Buckle up, because today we're climbing into the cockpits of two of the most advanced fighter jets ever built. That's right, we're talking about a head-to-head, -head. the F-22 Raptor versus the Su-57. Yeah, when you folks requested this face-off, you weren't kidding around. This is the stuff of, well, legends and speculation and probably some classified briefings, too. I mean, who doesn't love a good fighter jet duel, right? But it's more than just boys and their toys. We're talking about billions of dollars of R&D, cutting edge tech, and let's be real, some serious geopolitical posturing. Exactly. So we're going to break it all down. What are these jets all about? What makes them tick? What are their strengths, their weaknesses? And ultimately, who would come out on top in a hypothetical 2024 showdown? Let's dive in. So first, let's introduce our contenders. In the red corner, hailing from, well, you know, the place with a bit of a track record with fighter jets, the good old U.S. of A. Yep. It's the F-22 Raptor fifth generation stealth fighter. Right. And we should underscore that. The F-22, when it entered service back in 2005, it was a total game changer. It was the world's first operational fifth generation fighter. It basically wrote the rule book, then dared everyone else to catch up. Exactly. And it really did set a benchmark for stealth, for speed, for maneuverability, and this whole idea of, you know, having total situational awareness in the air. It's like it has eyes everywhere and is playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. That's a great way to put it. So that's our reigning champ, the F-22, a legend right. in its own right. But in the blue corner, Looking to shake things up, we've got a contender coming in hot from Russia. Here we have the Su-57, also a fifth-gen fighter, no doubt. But with, let's just say, a slightly different approach, right? Yeah, I mean, if you think of the F-22 as kind of a specialist, right? Uh, Designed primarily for air-to-air -air combat, the Su-57, it's aiming for that more multi-role capability. So it's like the Swiss Army knife of fighter jets. In a way, yeah. You're thinking air-to-air, -air, you're thinking air-to-ground, and it's really meant to be this very versatile platform. Interesting. So even from the outset, we're seeing two very different design philosophies at play here. Absolutely, and those design choices. They tell us a lot about each country's strategic priorities and, frankly, how they view the future of air warfare. Okay, so right off the bat, it's the veteran champion all about stealth and precision versus the agile newcomer looking to exploit any opening. And that right there is a recipe for one heck of an air show well, a hypothetical air show, hopefully. Yeah, let's keep these birds away from each other in real life, shall we? But to get back to your point, I think what's really fascinating here is that these jets aren't just specs on paper. Not at all. They represent different schools of thought, different approaches to solving the same problem. How do you dominate the sky in the 21st century? Exactly. And how those different approaches play out in a hypothetical engagement, well, that's where things get really interesting. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks here. Speed. I mean, it is a fighter jet after all. How fast can these things move? All right, so when we're talking top speed, the F-22, it can hit Mach 2.25. Okay, so for us regular folks who don't speak fighter jet, that translates to? We're talking about roughly 1,500 miles per hour, which is, you know, pretty darn fast. Yeah, yeah, I'd say. Get a speeding ticket going 15 miles over the limit. What about the Su-57? Can it keep up? Oh, it can keep up, all right. The Su-57 actually edges out the F-22 when it comes to pure speed. It can hit Mach 2.35. So it's got the need for speed, but I imagine there's more to this than just putting the pedal to the metal. Oh, absolutely. Top speed, it's just one piece of the puzzle. When we're talking about a potential engagement, how those speeds are used strategically, that's where things get really interesting. So it's about how you use it, not just how much you've got. Okay, so top speed aside, what else does the F-22 bring to this aerial duel? Well, this is where the F-22 really shines. Stealth. It's designed to be practically invisible to radar, which makes it incredibly hard for enemies to detect it, you know, until it's too late. So it's like a ghost appearing out of thin air. <laughs> it's got to play havoc with a pilot's head. Oh, absolutely. That psychological element is huge. I mean, imagine you're in your cockpit, you're scanning your radar, and you see nothing. And then, bam. The F-22 is right on your six. Exactly. That element of surprise, it can be a game changer in a combat situation. All right, so the F-22 is the master of stealth. What's the Su-57's counter strategy? How does it even begin to compete with that? Well, the F-22 is all about stealth and precision. The Su-57, it counters with maneuverability. It's all about agility. So while the S-22 is trying to be invisible, the Su-57 is basically saying, good luck hitting me, I'm all over the sky. That's a great way to put it. 
It all comes down to those thrust vectoring engines that allow it to change the direction of its thrust mid-flight, making it incredibly agile. So we're talking about some serious Top Gun level maneuvers here. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so we've got stealth versus agility, but what about firepower? What are these jets packing when it comes to, you know, actually engaging the enemy? Well, both jets are carrying some seriously impressive arsenals. The F-22, it can be armed with a range of air-to-air -air missiles. We're talking about the AIM-120 AMRAM, which has a range of over 100 miles. Okay, so this thing can take out a target before it even sees it coming. Pretty much. And then you've got the AIM-9X Sidewinder, which is a heat-seeking missile, known for its, you know, incredible accuracy in those close-in dogfights. So long range and up close, it's got options. Exactly. And on top of that, it can also carry various precision guided bombs for those air to ground missions. So it's a multi-talented, heavily armed flying machine. What about the Su-57? Does it come to the fight with uh, a slingshot or can it go toe to toe with the Raptor? Oh, the Su-57 is bringing the heat as well. It has its own suite of both long range and short range air to air missiles. We're talking about the R-77, which is designed to compete with the American AMRAAM. So it's answer to the long range threat. Exactly. And then you have the R-73, which is a highly maneuverable short range missile. Really dangerous in a dogfight scenario. So it's got a plan for close encounters too. What about those ground attack capabilities we talked about? Right, so the Su-57, it can also carry a variety of bombs and rockets for those air to ground engagements. So both jets come low for bear. But having weapons is one thing. Knowing where to aim them, that's another story altogether. Let's talk about the systems that make these jets such formidable opponents. I'm talking about their sensors, their avionics, the whole shebang. Ah, yes, the brains behind the brawn. This is where the F-22 really starts to flex its, well, technological muscle. Okay, so it's not just a big engine and a bunch of missiles. There's some serious tech under the hood. Oh, absolutely. The F-22 boasts an incredibly advanced sensor suite. It has a powerful radar system that can detect targets from incredibly long distances. So it can see you before you can see it, basically. Pretty much. But it's more than just radar. It also has electro-optical and infrared sensors, which means it can see in all weather conditions, even in complete darkness. So even if it can't see the Su-57 directly, it can still sense it's there? That's pretty wild. It really is. The Su-57, to be fair, it also possesses a very sophisticated sensor suite, but many analysts believe it doesn't quite match the fidelity and range of the F-22 system. Okay, so the F-22 potentially has the upper hand when it comes to sensing what's out there, even if it can't see it with the naked eye. You got it. All right, yeah. so to recap, we've got the F-22 with the edge in stealth, in long-range awareness, and potentially in sensor technology. The Su-57 is faster, insanely agile, but is it enough to really compete? That's the million dollar question, right? And to really start to understand the answer, we have to look beyond just those theoretical capabilities. We have to look at how these jets have performed in the real world. Let's get into it then. Tell me these birds have seen some action. Well, when it comes to real world experience, the F-22 has a more established track record. Okay, so it's been there, done that. Exactly. It's been deployed in various conflicts in the Middle East, taking out enemy aircraft and supporting ground troops. It's a battle-tested platform. It's proven itself. So the F-22 has some serious street cred. What about the Su-57? Has it mixed it up in the real world? You know, the Su-57 service record, it's a bit more limited. It's been deployed to Syria. Okay, so it's seen some action. It has, but those deployments have primarily been for testing and evaluation purposes, not really sustained combat operations. So more like field trips than full-blown tours of duty. Essentially, yes. So in terms of actual combat experience, the F-22 definitely has the upper hand. Experience. The toughest teacher, but often the best, right? Okay, so we've got these two incredible machines, each with its own set of pros and cons. But let's be real, none of this comes cheap. How does cost factor into this equation? Ah, uh, yes, the uh, the elephant in the room. The F-22, while an incredible feat of engineering, it comes with a, shall we say, a hefty price tag. How hefty are we talking? Give me the numbers. <laughs> well, it's estimated to cost about $150 million per plane to manufacture. $150 million per plane. That's right. And even more to operate and maintain over its lifespan. I guess when you're talking about that level of technology, it doesn't come cheap. What about the Su-57? Is it any easier on the wallet? Well, that was one of Russia's goals. They wanted to create a more cost-effective alternative to the F-22. A more budget-friendly fighter jet. Essentially. But those production delays and some of the other challenges we talked about earlier, they've likely driven the Su-57's overall cost up significantly. So it's hard to put an exact price tag on it. 
But it's safe to say that operating and maintaining a fleet of these advanced jets, it's a significant investment. Yeah, no kidding. It's a tough call. Go for the best of the best, even if it breaks the bank, or opt for something that's maybe a bit more budget friendly, but might not be quite as capable. Yeah, it's a tough choice, isn't it? Like, do you go with the premium option knowing it's going to cost you, or do you try to find that sweet spot where you're getting the most bang for your buck? It's a classic dilemma, and there's no easy answer. Especially when you're talking about something as, well, high stakes as military hardware. Absolutely. So after all this back and forth, the stealth, the agility, the tech, the price tag, we've got to land this plane. Let's bring it in for a landing. If the F-22 and the Su-57 actually went head to head in a, let's call it a hypothetical 2024 showdown, hmm. who wins? Ugh, ah, the million dollar question, right? You know, if you ask 10 different defense analysts, you'll probably get 11 different answers. I'm gone now. You can't leave our listeners hanging. Give us something to work with. What are the experts saying? Okay, I'll give you the breakdown. Based on everything we know, the data, the simulations, all the expert opinions out there, most would probably give the F-22 the edge. At least initially. Initially. So there's room for things to change. Oh yeah. This isn't a, you know, a one size fits all situation. A lot depends on the specific circumstances of the engagement. So you're saying context is king. 100%. But to answer your question directly, in a beyond visual range engagement, the F-22 with its stealth capabilities, it would likely have the upper hand. It could dictate the terms of the engagement, potentially even neutralize the Su-57 before it even knew it hit it. So in that scenario, the Su-57 wouldn't even know it was in a fight until it was over. That's the idea behind that stealth advantage. But, and this is a big but. Okay, I'm sensing a but coming. But the Su-57, it's not just sitting there with its, you know, wings crossed. It's designed with those very scenarios in mind. So it's got some tricks up its sleeve? Let's just say it's not going down without a fight. Okay, I'm intrigued. What happens if the Su-57 can drag the F-22 into a closer engagement? We're talking like Top Gun up close and personal kind of stuff. All right, now we're talking. Now it becomes a question of whether the F-22's stealth and sensor advantage can overcome the Su-57's superior maneuverability in a close quarters dogfight. So it becomes a real nail biter. Oh yeah. And this is where the Su-57's thrust vectoring and those advanced electronic countermeasures, that's where they could really come into play. So it really is a case of like styles make fights, as they say. Absolutely. And in this hypothetical matchup, we're talking about two very different fighting styles, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. So ultimately, who emerges victorious from this aerial duel? Is it a stalemate, a draw? It's tough to say. I mean, honestly, in a real world scenario, there's so much more at play than just the capabilities of the jets themselves. Let's break that down a little. What else comes into play? Well, you've got pilot skill, which is huge, uh -huh. right? Then you've got things like support systems, electronic warfare, even something as simple as the weather can drastically impact the outcome. Yeah, you can have the most advanced jet in the world, but if your pilot's having a bad day or the weather's socked in. It's a whole different ball game. Which is why, you know, I always say there's no single best fighter jet. It's all about the right tool for the right job, the right circumstances. Exactly. And the F-22 and the Su-57, they're both incredible feats of engineering. They represent the pinnacle of fighter jet technology, at least, you know, as far as we know. Because who knows what kind of top secret stuff they're working on in those classified hangars, right? That's a discussion for another deep dive, but for now, I think it's safe to say this face-off, it really highlights those key questions facing the future of air combat. Yeah, it makes you think, will stealth and beyond visual range engagements be the name of the game going forward? Or will there always be a place for those close quarters dogfights? It's a debate that's raging on right now in military circles and, well, apparently on our deep dive as well. And on message boards and internet forums all over the world, I'm sure. But hey, that's what makes this stuff so interesting, right? It's those unanswered questions, those hypothetical scenarios, those what ifs that keep us coming back for more. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, there you have it, folks. The F-22 Raptor versus the Su-57. A clash of titans, a battle for the skies. A battle that hopefully will always remain hypothetical. I'm with you on that one, but we wanna hear from you. Who do you think would win in this epic showdown? Head over to our website or find us on social media. Let your voices be heard. And while you're there, let us know what other technological face-offs you'd like us to tackle in our next deep dive.
We're always up for a challenge. Until then, thanks for joining us and remember, keep your eyes on the skies.